microevolution can be seen to happen when the frequency of genes in the gene pools of populations of species change over a few generations. Macroevolution, however, happens on a far grander scale over millions of years, and it happens above the species level. In this lesson, we will focus on geological timescales and see how fossils offer evidence of macroevolution. The history of the Earth is divided into geological eras. Each era is further subdivided into geological periods. There are characteristic fossils that are associated with each period. It is not important to remember the names of these periods, nor when they occurred or how long they lasted. It is, however, important to understand geological time and the progression of life over this time. You do, however, need to know the names of the geological eras. And in this case, it's pretty much as easy as remembering your alphabet. It will go in the order C, M and P. The first era is the one that starts with a C. That is the Cenozoic era and it is the most recent of all of the geological eras. The second era is the one that starts with an M, the Mesozoic era. Then we move to P and note that there are two eras that start with a P. But again, just follow your alphabetical order. PA, the Paleozoic era, comes before PR, the Precambrian era. The following table summarizes some of the most important information about the different geological eras. As with all geological timescale tables, this table starts with the furthest time in the past and moves gradually towards the present. The first era is the Archaeozoic era, which took place about 4,500 million years ago. During this era, the Earth was formed. The first period that we specify within the Archaeozoic era is the Precambrian period. This happened between 4,500 to 2,500 million years ago. Geological and fossil evidence of life during that period include prokaryotes, the first eukaryotes, and the first multicellular organisms, specifically the invertebrates. The second era is the Paleozoic era, which lasts from about 570 million years ago through to 225 million years ago. It is subdivided into six periods. The first period is called the Cambrian, and that took place between 570 and 515 million years ago. Geological and fossil evidence available from that time includes trilobites and other hard-shelled organisms. The second period in the Paleozoic era is the Ordovician, which occurred between 515 and 435 million years ago. During that time, we have evidence of ammonites and the first vertebrates in the form of jawless fish. The Silurian period took place 435 to 400 million years ago, and there is quite a large amount of fossil evidence from this time. The evidence includes the first life on land in the form of mosses, as well, we also have fossil evidence of the first sharks. The fourth period of the Paleozoic era is the Devonian period, which took place between 400 to 345 million years ago. And here we have primitive vascular plants appearing in the fossil record. Also, the first insects appear, as do the first amphibians. 
the Carboniferous period took place between 345 to 280 million years ago. Here we have fossil evidence that forests of ferns existed. There was an incredible increase in the number of amphibians and the first reptiles appear on the earth. The final period in the Paleozoic era is the Permian period, which stretched from 280 to 225 million years ago. During this era, gymnosperms would have been plentiful. A decrease in amphibians, however, is evident, and the first mammal-like reptiles appear in the fossil record. 225 million years ago marks the start of the Mesozoic era, which lasted until just 65 million years ago. The Mesozoic era is divided into three periods, the first of which is called the Triassic. The Triassic ran from 225 million years ago to 190. During this time, the fossil record shows that there were fewer ferns present, but more gymnosperms. And this period is noted for being the one during which the first dinosaurs arose. The second period in the Mesozoic era is the well-known Jurassic period, which lasted from 190 to 140 million years ago. The fossil record shows that this was the age of the dinosaurs, as they were dominant. There were mammals present, but they were very small, and appearing in the fossil record we find the first birds. The last period in the Mesozoic era is the Cretaceous period, which lasted from 140 to 65 million years ago. The fossil record shows that this was the period during which the first flowering plants or angiosperms developed. There were, however, fewer gymnosperms present. This period is also remarkable for the fact that it is now that the dinosaurs became extinct. The Cenozoic era is the most recent era in which we are still at the moment. There are two periods making up this era. The tertiary period started 65 million years ago. During this period the fossil record shows that birds and mammals dominate the face of the earth. The tertiary period is also notable for the fact that the first early hominids appear in the fossil record. The current geological period is called the Quaternary and it started a mere two million years ago. It is during this period that modern mammal species evolved and we find the presence of modern day humans. I mentioned earlier that the most compelling source of evidence for macroevolution is the presence of fossils. Paleontology is the study of fossils. Now, what exactly is a fossil? A fossil is any trace of a previously living organism which has been preserved in a substance such as stone. The most common fossils are formed from body parts such as bones or shells. But fossils also include the remains of activities of living things such as their footprints, burrows, or droppings. Although most commonly fossils are found in stone, tree resin or amber, tar pits, ice, volcanic ash, and peat swamps are also places where fossils can be found. So how are fossils formed? Well, for fossils to be formed, a very unique set of circumstances have to be in place. A body part, or the whole body, must come to lie in mud, 
and then be buried in the mud soon after death. This is known as being buried in sediment, which is layers of mud or clay particles. Once it is buried, microorganisms decompose or break down the soft tissue of the body. More layers of sediment pile up over the body, squeezing water out and compacting the sediment into rock, which is known as sedimentary rock. Over time, the original hard parts of the body, the bones or the shells, can become transformed as minerals from the surrounding rock slowly infiltrates the bones or shell and change its chemical composition from bone or shell to rock. The hard body parts thus become turned to stone as they absorb minerals from the surrounding rock in which they are embedded. Further layers are deposited on top of the fossil, which remains buried in the sedimentary rock. It can happen that for some reason the sedimentary rock will become exposed. The slow movements of the earth could push up the fossil-carrying rock. The rock is then eroded away, exposing the fossil. Sometimes, when roadways are cut through stone, fossils are exposed. Once the fossil is exposed and discovered, it is carefully freed from the surrounding rock by paleontologists, who are the scientists who study fossils. Have you heard people talk about the fossil record? The fossil record means all of the fossils that have been discovered to date. South Africa has a very rich fossil record. Fossil records are not complete and do not give a true indication of all of the species that have existed. The reasons for this are animals consisting of soft tissue do not fossilize successfully and most land animals do not die near mud and sediment. Therefore, very few organisms become fossils because the conditions for fossilization are so unique. However, all of the fossils found to date are in accordance with the theory of evolution. If these fossils are arranged from their oldest time-wise to their youngest, they provide successive evidence of changes that make up evolution. Many people argue against evolution, saying that there are too many missing links. This is nonsense. There are many examples of intermediary or transitional fossils that have been found. These are fossils that fall in between other groups. These fossils have been found in rock strata that, when dated, fit perfectly into the sequence. There are examples of intermediary forms between reptile and mammal. Reptiles have jaws made of four bones, while mammals have jaws made from one bone. Reptiles have undifferentiated teeth, whilst mammal teeth are differentiated. There are many fossils which show the transition between reptiles and mammals. From reptile to bird, the famous Archaeopteryx fossil appears very reptile-like, but has feathers. There are fossils showing the transition from four-legged land mammal to aquatic mammals, such as the whale. Many fossils exist showing the changes from small, rodent-like animal to large, hooved horses. Human evolution is particularly rich with many intermediary fossils and more being found all the time. So, whilst the fossil record may be incomplete, it still provides sound, convincing evidence of macroevolution. Really, really good. Really, 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 really good. Uh-huh. Silence, please.